Is it just me or does this ladder behind me make me look like I have a halo? Anyways, today we are going to be veganizing a classic takeout recipe, broccoli beef or beef and broccoli, same two ingredients, not sure exactly on the order, I've seen it both ways. But anyways, we are giving it a totally plant-based twist today. We only need a few simple swaps and this recipe also only takes 20 minutes to make. So even if you did have a vegan beef and broccoli at a restaurant near you, you can make this at home and I promise it'll be even better. So let's get into the recipe. So the first thing that we're going to do for this recipe is to prepare our soy curls. So in a medium to large size bowl, you're going to add in one teaspoon of imitation beef broth. It's sort of a bouillon paste and add just a little bit of water. Uh, I find that using a smaller bit makes it easier to dissolve. And here I'm just taking a whisk and dissolving that until it's fully incorporated and darker brown as you can see here. Then we are going to add in our soy curls, which is essentially just dehydrated soybeans. You can buy them on Amazon or directly through the Butler Foods website. All the links are in my blog post. But then we're just going to top it with the remaining water. We'll be using three cups of hot water in total. And here I'm just mixing it a little bit to make sure that all the soy curls stay hydrated. Honestly, you don't need to do that. You can just let it sit. But we're gonna let it sit for about three to five minutes and this is what they should look like afterwards. As you can see, they're a little bit larger in size. And then what we're going to do is drain them out and we're going to be using the leftover liquid later in a recipe. What I like to do is place my bowl on top of the sieve and get as much liquid out of the soy curls as possible um, because once we add our marinade and other sauces later on in this recipe, they'll absorb more of that flavor. Speaking of which, we're gonna start by taking half of a cup of that reserved liquid and adding two teaspoons of dark soy sauce to it and whisking well. So dark soy sauce is different from light soy sauce. I go into it a little bit more in the blog post, but it's essentially just adding color to our soy curls to make them look more like beef. So now we're going to warm a tablespoon of high heat oil in a pan over medium high heat, then add your soy curls and saute, just honestly, just stir it around a little bit so the oil is evenly distributed. Then you're going to push them to the side and add in that broth and dark soy sauce mixture. The reason we're adding it to the side is and diluting it is that if you pour it directly over top, the soy curls will absorb the liquid unevenly. And the main part of this step of the recipe is to add a little bit of flavor to the soy curls but honestly we're mostly adding texture right now and searing them so they get extra juicy and have more of a beef like juiciness texture and flavor so we're going to saute them for three to five minutes over medium high heat until all of the liquid is evaporated so as you can see here they're much darker in color they still have a little bit left to go there's still some like droplets in the pan um, but here there is pretty much nothing in the pan the pan is pretty dry you're starting to get some brown bits in the soy curls as well so you know that they're being seared using that oil so then it's time to move on so now we're just going to add our remaining teaspoon of oil to the pan and then once it's warm add in some white onion some garlic and some ginger i sliced my onion pretty thinly uh, because that's how i prefer it but you can also dice it if you want then you're just going to saute this mixture for one to two minutes until the garlic and ginger become fragrant and the onion starts to become translucent. Then at this point, you can mix in the remaining soy curls. The reason we push them to the side is we don't want them to absorb that oil and we're mostly focusing on cooking the onion, ginger, garlic at this point. So I actually turn the heat down, but I don't recommend it. I would keep it up. And then at this point, we're going to add in our chopped broccoli florets. You'll need about four cups in total. And then we're going to quickly whip up our sauce using a third of a cup of low sodium tamari or soy sauce, two tablespoons of coconut sugar, you can also use brown sugar, and a tablespoon of either cornstarch or arrowroot powder, plus that remaining liquid that we soak the soy curls in, you should have about three fourths of a cup of it. So then just whisk this until the cornstarch becomes fully dissolved, and then you're going to add it directly into your pan. The reason why we're adding extra liquid is one, the cornstarch will thicken it up, but two, as it steams off, it's going to cook our broccoli um, nice and evenly, and it will also help it to have a vibrant green color. So with the heat at medium to medium high, you can reduce it if you feel like you need to. You're going to cook it for about, I'd say five minutes or so until the broccoli becomes cooked to your liking. I like mine pretty crunchy, so I only did five minutes. I have a pet peeve for mushy broccoli and it just looks so much prettier when it's bright green instead of dull and sad looking. Anyways, at this point, you're going to turn the heat off, then add in some toasted sesame oil and stir it in. 
Fun fact, toasted sesame oil is usually a finishing oil because it uses flavor with heat. So you just wanna add it in at the end of your dish and a little really does go a long way. And then if you'd like to, you can sprinkle some sesame seeds on top, but that's totally optional. And I just wanted to give you guys a close up of the soy curls. I feel like they magically transform into a very beef like texture, especially if you're getting like questionable takeout food. I feel like it's pretty on par. So then you can serve this however you'd like. I like to serve mine with some fluffy jasmine rice. You could also, for a less traditional serving, serve it over some rice noodles. And again, you can top it with more sesame seeds, add in extra veggies or have some on the side. But however you want to enjoy it, dig in. It's juicy, it's hearty, it's packed with protein and it is so so delicious and that is how you make the best ever vegan beef and broccoli I tested this recipe several times I fed it to my fiance who used to love beef and broccoli and he gave it a 10 out of 10 so I really think you're going to love this recipe the only hard things that you need to come across are the soy curls and the dark soy sauce, but you can find both of those online pretty easily if you live in the US. But I also have a few recipe substitutions listed in the blog post. So if you wanna check out the full recipe, all my steps, tips, tricks, etc., that will be linked below. So don't forget to check that out. I actually forgot to mention this in the intro, but I also have another YouTube video on some other Chinese inspired takeout recipes that I have veganized. So I will link that in the description below if you want to check it out I highly recommend you do I feel like Chinese takeout recipes are just really satisfying and delicious and I also love how they still have veggies in them um, because I don't know I'm just that kind of weird person who likes to eat vegetables with almost every meal but yeah I hope you like them before I go on another endless ramble about something irrelevant. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you like what you see here, please give this video a thumbs up so I know to film more videos like this. And you can also hit that subscribe button down there if you want to see my vegan recipe slash occasional lifestyle content. Other than that, I have nothing left to say. So have a great day. I hope to virtually see you in a video in the future. And yeah, take care of yourself, eat good food, make this recipe live, laugh, love, you know. All right. Bye.